All right, welcome to Chip Roasting with Brennan and uh, Wally, or Wally and Brennan, whatever. Um, yes. If you're watching this, you may notice there's an- another person here today, and uh, that's yeah. our friend Reese, our first guest. What's up, Reese? How are you doing? I'm doing really well. How are you doing, Wally? I'm doing good. Um, so it's odd because to- there's usually only one not Brennan, or I guess that's there's true. generally two not Brennans, but then there's another yeah. not Brennan who is never a Brennan. Uh, <laughs> we have a, 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 a Reese. We have two never Brennans. <laughs> As opposed yeah, to just the still following after that, then you, then you understand more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's a lot to get to, uh, but we're going to do everything a little out of order today because. Oh, yes, um, so out of order. Not that Reese, we ever have a planned, coherent order here, but. Fair, fair. Um, but Reese can only stay on for so long today. So we're going to do, we're going to talk about things that he can talk on. <laughs> yes. I'm At nowhere least... near as knowledgeable as these two, so. And we're really not even that knowledgeable. So. No, so I mean. <laughs> how, how silly I am. So. <laughs> um, so instead of talking about news first today, we're going to talk about WandaVision because there were two episodes since our last episode. Um, Brennan, you, you, you want to start off with this one, WandaVision episode seven? Sure, absolutely. Uh, WandaVision episode seven. What can I say? It was the seventh episode of uh, WandaVision. Uh, it was a um, unique kind of one yeah. from the approach it took. You know, we're, we're, we're so far away from where One Division started off with the pure homages there, uninterrupted. Uh, unfortunately, everything is broken up a bit now. Um, yeah, you kind of go from... It was odd because we made a lot of predictions last up ep- last episode of this podcast that we all just assumed would come true like we always say we're not going to speculate here and then end of every episode we're always like speculating on like what on, on what comes next exactly so we were like oh it's it's going to be a clear modern family homage it's going to be an hour long um oh yeah <laughs> it was not an, an, was not an, an hour long past. it was certainly that was what it pulled from the most whenever we were in the westview one division section oh yeah yeah, absolutely. I, I don't know. I, it, it, I was hoping for like a totally like what like like modern family style theme song, modern family, whatever. Like it definitely had like uh, elements of like the house and like like how they acted in the, in the interviews, which I, which I absolutely loved. But I was hoping for more of modern family. I watched all like twelve seasons of Modern Family. I did not want that to all be in waste here. But unfortunately, <laughs> there was there was nothing for an avid Modern Family viewer such as. Uh, as, as myself to like pick up on things like, oh, that's the house. I know this is whatever character, alas. But it was still uh, fantastic. Um, the whole arc with Vision where he's like stuck in traffic and then he's like, wait a minute, this isn't real. I can just like fly out of here. I love that bit. It was, it was fantastic. It was so good. Um, I'm, trying, I'm trying to remember exactly what happened with all the elements of of the story here. I remember what, what happened in, in Westview very clearly. I can't quite remember what happened outside. Um, so have- oh, the n- rocket person. The engineer. Rocket scientist. In- engineer, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> did the engineer present themselves? Because I don't think that we were fully out on that. I- we, did, we did see the military S base set up, but none of them presented themselves as a doctor or a rocket scientist or anything like that. I still think that hasn't been revealed. Right. So a lot of people on the internet are on, on, are on your page um, that they just... They just kind of – they haven't involved themselves yet. Um, they might later on, which we only have one episode left, so who knows. Um, I I also – we also speculated last episode that there would be someone, but after the last episode, I was like, well, I don't think they're going to give us that this early anymore. Can I ask you that one? Um, yeah, they, they thought – a lot of people thought, including myself, that it was going to be Reed Richards for the Fantastic Four. Okay. And they just announced the Fantastic Four, like, three months ago. So I don't know why they'd be bringing in this early. So, I mean, yeah, I think, I think that's all we're going to get for the engineer personally, but uh, maybe not. Yeah. So talking about themes, you were saying that it was a little bit lacking of the modern family asked. I did a lot of really strong office vibes, especially the piano based Mm -hmm. intro song and how it was telling different scenes and sections and like, uh, with like Wanda's name on a bunch of different things, which I'm sure there were millions of Easter eggs inside of all of those. Right names of Wanda that I'm not capable of picking up but um I then also how they would turn to the camera and there were like the sit down interviews that were kind of taking place in like the conference room of the office there was 
very strong office vibes to me. I honestly thought it pulled more from The Office than Modern Family, but it pulled from both of them. Those are the inspirations of it. Interesting. Um, I got you. Yeah, a lot of people were saying that with the intro sounded sounded a lot more like The Office, and then that just the rest. To me, it just seemed like an homage to that general uh, type of sitcom. Yeah. Yeah. Where it was um, just like, go ahead. And I think that's also part, like, in the earlier episodes, whenever we were looking at the decades of, like, the 50s, 60s, 70s, there weren't very many different sitcoms and TV shows to pull from. So right. if you wanted to play homage to the 50s, you had Dick Van Dyke and I Love Lucy. That you, There really were not other episode, uh, other TV shows there. But right. nowadays, I mean, you could turn on, even in 2010, you'd go to any other station that you wanted and find a dozen different sitcoms and mockumentaries and things like that that were going on. So... It's hard to play homage to a whole decade and only right. target one sitcom an episode sim- simply because the media has expanded so much. So they right. one. Even more so now. I mean, especially with you know, oh, the introduction Netflix. of Hulu and Netflix and Netflix. Apple yeah. TV Plus and CBS L Access and so on and so forth. It's just, uh, speaking it's- yeah. Sorry, speaking of CBS L Access, Did I'm you very finally proud cancel of this. it? I finally remembered to cancel my membership before it, it renewed. So I'm finally free of the burden of paying CBS every month for <laughs> access to CBS All Access. I'm finally free. I've waited for so long. And did, did I hear correctly that this was this uh, this podcast that we're filming right now is being added on Paramount All Paramount Plus? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, yes, you did. Yes, that's exactly I'm what. I'm getting that now. Oh, really? Yeah, we actually signed an exclusive deal with uh, <laughs> Paramount, Paramount Plus. Yeah, uh, this is now getting off of Spotify, off of Apple Podcast. We're going to be exclusively <laughs> streaming on um, yeah. Paramount. Especially YouTube, it's getting off of there. I might, because because of all the stuff YouTube's dealing with its creators and such. Oh yeah. But uh, yeah, Paramount Plus exclusively. You heard it here first. Actually, Mark Hamill put it out in the world first. But oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah she signed an exclusive deal with Mark Hamill, who is the <laughs> mastermind behind uh, <laughs> Paramount Plus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's the best behind mastermind behind everything. So. Yes. I mean, um, uh, Reese and any. Uh, viewer or listener of this episode who has not seen uh, my masterpiece, uh, the Mark Hamill Holiday Special on YouTube. Oh, Search yeah. up after this episode, uh, the Mark Hamill Holiday Special. That is my right that. child. That was inspired by uh, months of discussion on, on, on this podcast about the Star Wars Holiday Special itself and also about Mark Hamill. If you are not in on the Mark Hamill joke now, episode there's like two. There's like 18 hours of jokes about Mark Hamill, so you, you, you cannot catch up. Don't even try. Um, well, but long story short, Mark Hamill is everyone. Everyone is Mark Hamill, and Mark Hamill is responsible for everything. Yeah. It's like Inception okay. with Mark Hamill. Yeah. It's Mark Hamception. Ex- exactly. But, yeah. Well, speaking... Sorry. No, that's it. Yeah. This is... <laughs> speaking of Mark Hamill, um, what did you guys think of uh, Photon? Oh, oh yes. yes. That was like yeah. one of the coolest superhero like introductions ever like i yeah. just the, the with the sound and the imagery oh god that was awesome i loved it that was about the only part of this episode i like which is why i wanted everyone else to go first but yeah it, it it is very cool to see mark hamill becoming yet another superhero in the <laughs> mcu uh, but it was it was very cool to see and like i would have had no idea so because the last episode here i was talking about monica rambeau and all that stuff and then wally over here goes like oh you know that she has like a superhero counterpart in the comic books by the name of like, like of, of Photon. And I was like, I did not know that at all. So we talked about it a lot. And I was watching that episode. It was the next episode, very next one. And I was like, oh. <laughs> so it's kind of cool. I'm very excited to see everyone just become their comic book counterparts as soon as I figure out that they have comic book counterparts. Um, I'm very excited to somehow discover in this episode that uh, Jimmy Woo uh, has some like comic book counterpart where he's like a, he's like a magician or whatever, some like super powerful uh, sorcerer. Yeah, and, that's uh, episode nine. He just uh, he be- he becomes him. That's yeah. like we'll see how that goes. That's like one character. I I don't know if they have a counter comic book power counterpart. <laughs> Words are hard. <laughs> comic book counterpart. Um, Counter book comic part. Exactly. I think that's what you said last time. <laughs> yes, that's what I said last time. <laughs> now, now that you bring it up, Jimmy Wu, Jim Halpert is actually one of the reasons why I thought it had such strong office vibes. We literally have 
Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Oh yeah. 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 Absolutely. Um, uh, but, well, and a lot of people are saying that's why uh, uh, John Krasinski can't be um, uh, Mr. Fantastic because he's already in the show. Yeah, yeah, he's already in the MCU. Like, you can't have someone in the MCU playing two different roles. Exactly. Uh, like Chris Evans playing uh, Flame. <laughs> people really want him to come back the, as the, the Human Torch, as like yeah, the multiverse the thing, because yeah. that'd just be hilarious. I think it would be hilarious as well. With kind of like the Evan Peters thing. Um, let's see. I have a lot of notes on this episode, like yeah. a lot of notes, um, but most of them were either answered in episode eight or I just, um, I realized they were dumb. Um, but I do have a question for you, Race, about just this has been a, brought up a couple epi- times in a couple of different episodes. How do they know what happened during the events of Infinity War and Endgame? Because I think this even came up in episode seven. How do they know what happened? How does who? No. The, the general population, because uh, Monica has referred to it. Um, the, the guy who heads up S.W.O.R.D. has alluded to it. Like the so, events that have happened in Endgame and Infinity War. Just wanted yeah, to hear your take on this. Was that this new like tiny Avengers that took place after the snap in Infinity War that killed Thanos mm-hmm. were very open with what happened. And they like uh, Black Widow in the universe has already been known for leaking files and showing everything back whenever shield collapsed at least revealing all of that declassifying all of that information whether she had the right to or not that's clearly her her mo my small miniature headcanon was she did the same thing after infinity war half the world the entire world at that point was desperately looking for answers and that seems perfectly suitable for um the black widow's character um in the mcu to just say hey this is what happened this is what we did we failed we're sorry like there was no stopping this and um then once everyone came back i mean all of a sudden you have an equal magnitude thing they talked about how um monica rambo took a couple weeks to come back to sword after Mm -hmm. the 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 blip the unsnapping i don't know what to call it whatever (laughs) the the, the dusting whatever um, unsnapping is fantastic. Unsnapping. Okay, so after the unsnapping, she took a couple weeks to come back to Sword. I feel like that is like a massive therapy process session for the entire universe, and I'm sure there are people catching each other up. Um, they probably didn't have the first person viewpoint that we had in Infinity War and Endgame, but I, I think in the universe it makes sense to assume that some of the Avengers, if not all of them, or maybe just our, our um, uh, Black Widow, leaked right. that that information, put it out there. Um, gotcha. I mean, something of that magnitude and scale, everyone's going to be interested in it, so. Gotcha. Did she, like, put out, like, a Twitter video? Or did she hold a press conference? Like, how'd that all go down? Maybe she uh, made a small mini-series and got a giant book deal from the New York Times or something. Yeah, I mean, you have to make money somehow. And, <laughs> it's true, you know, and it was five years, so. Maybe she could have done that. Maybe you pay them out plus. I mean, it's all, anything's possible. I'm 100% just imagining now just Rocket Raccoon going on, like, Jimmy Fallon or some other type late night talk show and just spilling all the beans here about what happened. <laughs> oh my God. That would be, you know what? I think Marvel needs to explore that now. Just give, yeah. just that's do interviews new, with Rocket, Ro- Rocket new, Raccoon. It's Rocket Raccoon on uh, Jimmy Fallon and the late night show and the late, late night show and Saturday Night Live. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Just, you know, forget like one division, just replace it with Rocket Raccoon just going on all these talk shows and <laughs> That's A plus content there. Oh my god, that'd be so funny. Um, let's see. What else? I would like to say whoever plays Darcy, her name is I Cat Dennings. Did she you always say her name. Yeah, I know, but I always know it, which is crazy because I love her. Say that one more time, Reese. Yeah, Cat yeah. Dennings. Okay. She's the one from the Thor one and two. Right. She somehow manages to have perfect um, chemistry with everyone on set. Because, like, her exchange back and forth with Vision in Episode 7 was was just fantastic. Like, that whole kind of her arc in that episode with Vision was just awesome. Yeah. I mean, Marvel does a great job casting its superheroes and Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man and Chris Evans as Captain America. I honestly think one of the best things they do, though, is their side characters, whether it's mm-hmm. from Ant-Man or Thor. I mean, they routinely have these hilarious people like Jimmy Woo. 
they routinely have hilarious side characters that are unforgettable and drown the whole universe. It's like, mm. that, that's me. That's a normal person, maybe with 19 PhDs or extensive FBI training, <laughs> but that's a normal person. Like, that, that's who I can see myself as. Like, it's, I, absolutely. That's the reason why I think the MCU is so endearing. Right, right. It's more relatable to, to we're more relatable to them. Or they're more more relatable. Like words are hard today. They're more <laughs> relatable to us than the, you know, man who built an iron suit. Yeah, yeah. or like a raccoon. Or a right. raccoon that, with guns. I feel like you're hung up on this raccoon bit, <laughs> and I, I really would love to dig into this maybe after the podcast. <laughs> what this motivation is? Are you are you secretly planning like a Guardians of the Galaxy three like with only Rocket? Like what what, what what's going on here? Um, I'm no, I this okay. Mark Hamill actually told me this in great confidence when it was spilled the beans here. This just Rocket Raccoon is getting his his like own spinoff series. Like, like we're gonna get like you know Thor four and Fantastic Four, and then after that it's gonna be only Raccoon like Rocket Raccoon movies for the next like ten years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Phase five through nine. Oh yeah, like you know how there are all those arcs in like the comic books where like it's like oh it's the Avengers, but like they're zombies, or oh it's like you know what whatever. This oh, is my. just like, like everyone's a raccoon. <laughs> or, yeah. Okay. <laughs> is this what your is this is this how is this what the uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special is going to introduce? Yes. Yeah. The Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special that was yes. very recently announced and is I don't know they are really trying to capitalize on the absolute fifth failure of the Star Wars holiday special those years ago. And I'm so excited to see what the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special will bring an official MCU. It's, it's, it's going to be insane, but yeah, it's, it's, it's just going to be rocket raccoon. Right, so let's, we've gotten off track, which is not abnormal for this podcast. Um, well, let's get back. I and let's, huh? I thought that was the point. Well, kind oh, of. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's exactly, that's true. Um, but let's, Absolutely. Let's talk about the commercial from episode seven, which is the Nexus being, or the Nexus pills, which was, alludes to Wanda being a Nexus being. Brennan, you know what yes. that is? No, I have no idea what that is. Okay, so in the, I think just in, in general, it means a Nexus is like, it connects multiple paths into one place. Nice. It's see, I think, but in the comic books, it, it's a, and I wrote, I copied the definition. It's a cross-dimensional gateway that connects all possible realities and realities between realities. And it's monitored by the Time Variance Authority, who, if you've seen the Loki commercial, they make an appearance in that. Ooh. So we're starting to link things together now, slowly I, but surely. There are a lot of hints um, that the multiverse is coming and going to come on strong. And oh, that's yeah. the major plot point of, I don't know, phase five, whatever, whatever post endgame there mm-hmm. is. Well, I think the MCU is kind of going in two different directions. They're going to do go. They're going to do the uh, magic and multi-dimensional thing, and then they're going to do whatever Falcon and the Winter Soldier is setting up, which might just lead into that too. I mean, who knows? Um, but as far as we know, Ant Man is setting up Kang the Conqueror, um, which Marvel has announced. So another I mean, next, which is yeah, yeah that's next. true. Ooh. So they might just all be setting up all that one one big thing. And, um... Firebird from uh, Phoenix from from X Men is also oh, yeah 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 so, the Phoenix Force yeah right. so bunch of them oh yeah um so they're they're pretty much setting up they've they set up Wanda to be a Nexus being uh which will definitely play in the um um multiverse of madness which everyone knows this is what that's leading up to. Um, and the more I watch the show, the more excited I get for that movie, except it's a whole year away. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the Multiverse of Madness is Doctor Strange too. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Which um, I think is going to be the, I think Doctor Strange is coming in next episode, putting it out in that right now. Really? It, or maybe you heard it here the 10th time, I don't know. But I think Doctor Strange <laughs> no. is coming in next episode. He's the big reveal that Paul Bettany interview was talking about. I I agree. I agree. I'm so prepared for the rabbit to be somebody. I would love if just out of nowhere, nothing explained if like the rabbit just turned into Doctor Strange and he was like, I was here the whole time. I was the rabbit. I was watching you. And now we're going to fix things. So I fantastic. I have I, something but, from TikTok. Someone yeah. on TikTok is at Abby Zara Fabern pointed out something about, the, oh no, that's the delivery guy. Uh, but... <laughs> Which kind of has something to do with it. Um, okay. The scene in where 
where Wanda and Wanda brings in Senior Cirque Scratchy into the house in episode two, when the kids lose Spark in episode five. Oh, when are they? Only, and when he says, or when he's there in that episode, he's never too far away, right? The delivery From guy only Loretta? shows up there. Yes. Interesting. Whenever, so, and then there's a rabbit on his hat. Uh, his, his uniforms, the delivery guy and the modern family mm-hmm. spin off. Interesting. Thing. Um, and his uniform in the episode says presto. Uh, the video theorizes that the mailman is Nicholas Scratch, who is also the rabbit. <laughs> Wait, so he's himself and the rabbit? I mean, maybe. Maybe. But I mean, we, we see him in the town. Right. I know this is starting to get to episode eight, which maybe we need to jump to before he starts. Right. To- I forgot that was one of the ones that had already been knocked out. So, so forget forget I ever said anything. All I right. Just want, I want the rabbit <laughs> to either be Doctor Strange or Charlie Cox's hair devil. Either that one of would those be, would be perfect. That would be the biggest switch. Up. <laughs> All you right. Have to explain the Daredevil thing. Just give me he Daredevil is. in the MCU. I'll I will be satisfied. I'll be like, yep, that makes sense. We okay, well, what, on. how, does that mean uh, uh, Agatha is working with Doctor Strange to kind of figure out what Wanda's is doing? Is okay. that what you're theorizing, Brennan? Nope, I'm not theorizing anything. I just want Daredevil. <laughs> we have some theories about all this, but I think we need to break down episode eight before we go into yes. this. That's true. Um, one more point I, Which, by the way, I have seven. like nothing to say about episode eight. Really? I don't what? know why. What? I wrote, wow. I wrote, like, look, wow. here are all my notes for episode seven. <laughs> here are my notes for episode eight. <laughs> episode eight was the flashback to end all flashbacks. It was an okay, origin gave, story in a forty-minute so, TV episode, and it was yes. great. But it already it answered most of the questions I had. It didn't really pose any more. But if you guys are, if you guys have questions, then let's let's go. Oh, yeah. um, I, I don't know what else. Today. I don't know what else there is to say about seven. Seven. Did you guys have anything? Yes, I have okay, something big. Something that just bothered me so much when I first saw it. In there's, there's no daredevil. In like yeah. the episode, uh, yeah, that. But also <laughs> something else, because um, there's this scene where Vision and Darcy are like in the van, and they're like trying to go back to Wanda to confront her, I suppose, and and like they're talking, and Darcy makes some comment about how she's been watching Wanda Vision for the past week, and she was like, I know that things seem rough, but like the love that you and Wanda have is, is, is real, I can tell. And so it's supposed to be this like sweet scene, but all I could think of is that's the worst possible mindset to like have. Cause as far as they know right now, Wanda is the bad guy who's controlling everyone, who's manipulating everyone, who's like holding vision hostage with no m- memories, not giving all this stuff. And it's just like, it's like when people are in relationships that can get like a like abusive or whatever Mm -hmm. some of the things that prevent them from leaving those relationships is like is being told it's like oh yeah i know that there Mm -hmm. might be some hard times but like stick with him because you know he like loves you or whatever because or or because she loves you and it's like as soon as they said that i was like okay the next two episodes are going to reveal that like wanda's not bad she's not doing this she's, she's not controlling it she's not aware she's not whatever she's not actually the bad guy so everything will be fine but just the fact that like when it was said in universe there all vision had to go off of all darcy had to go off of was seeing wanda like contain all these people control them hearing bad things about what she was doing to their minds and all that seeing all that and being told it's like no you know your love is real so everything's fine like that's just not the best message, I think, to send out there That's true. to people who are watching. So that kind of bugged me. And I was like, okay, because, of, because they're saying this, I know that's going to end with like, you know, Wanda not having in- intentionally done, in- not done anything bad, not like harming people, everything's going to get wrapped up. She's going to end the hero and not like a questionable, like, you know, is she good? Is she, is she bad? What are her next steps? It's going right. to end very obviously with her as the hero. But I was like, they just... I don't know. It was just, it was, it was, it was a weird choice for them to make in my opinion. Interesting. That That's a, it's a good point. Um, I appreciate that. Yeah. I, I, I just want to say that's a really cool way of looking at Brennan. That's something that I had, I didn't pick up at the time. And um, I appreciate you bringing that up because that is a real thing that 
Marvel and the creators have to think about as effects outside of the universe that kids are watching this, adults are watching this, people in long-term relationships are watching this. And, and if subconsciously in the back of your mind, you're hearing, if they love you, it's okay, no matter what they do. If That's, they love you, they can control an entire town. <laughs> Yeah. Again, also negative enforcement right there. That's not something I want. <laughs> I want people to know. Right. No. Yeah. I didn't even think about that either. Well, I'm not smart enough to think about that, but you know, <laughs> um, that was deep. It was a lot deeper than anything on this, this podcast ever. Oh yeah. Well, appreciate that. Bro. Yeah. yeah um, I don't want to take credit real for here. it. <laughs> <laughs> presence. It's, it's all connected. <laughs> um, uh, let's talk about that post-credit scene, which we got no answers for. Ooh, yes. Yeah, the it first was... post-credit scene at that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what one thing the... I... What? What was the order? Was it Pietro and... Yes. yes. Is, is Pietro is... first? Yeah, it was and Pietro then... and... Uh, director terrorist second? Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, though, yes. That's what Marcy called him. Uh, yeah, that's true. I mean, um, told, she might have told him something else, but sure, sure. Um, yeah. So obviously, we got no answers to what actually, like, what happened there, because the entire next episode was focused on Wanda and Agatha. But uh, what do you guys make of that end credit scene with Pietro just kind of appearing? It was very cool. I thought it was it was like a neat visual thing where, um, like. It, it was cool to see him now that we know he's like evil. Like he's still out there. He's not the real um, Pietro. I don't know if he's like evil per se, but he's being controlled by uh, Agnes or Agatha Harkness. It was Agatha all no. along. Yes, yes. Um, so I, he, he is sticking around. He's not just like gone. He's not out of the picture. So it was, it's, it's cool to know that in episode nine, he will have some role because in episode eight, uh, spoiler alert, we don't see anyone else. Episode seven ends with like uh, Monica Rambeau outside, uh, Quicksilver outside, Pigeon on his way. And we don't see any of them throughout all of episode eight. Nope, um, no, not a so one. Episode nine, like there are a lot of plot threads to wrap up in a single episode. Which is and... why it will be six hours long. <laughs> <laughs> or at least one hopes it's longer than 45 minutes. I'm not sure how they could do it in 45 minutes, but you know, they've done incredible things before with kind of cramming things to- together. So who knows? One 45 minute long exposition. No, that's how they would do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, do you guys think that this Pietro is just some random person that she found on the street that they casted Evan, uh, Evans to just play to kind of throw us off? Or do you think he's Fox's Quicksilver? In episode eight, uh, Agnes turns like a cicada into like a hummingbird or mm-hmm. whatever. She turned a cicada into Quicksilver. Change my mind. You can't. That's <laughs> <laughs> a bold the statement. Truth. When I first saw him, I was 100% convinced the multiverse was going to happen, especially with the multiverse of madness coming out and um, the rumors with, with the new Spider-Man movie. I thought that it was going to be 100%. We're going to see X-Men come in. Wanda's going to be the link. She's going to create the X-Men. Like, this is what's going to happen. Um, but as the episodes have gone on, and especially after we're finishing episode seven, I'm starting to think more and more that it is a just random person and it was a choice by the directors and by role casting to throw us off. I don't know why they, I mean, he isn't a massive actor, but he is a pretty well-known actor, especially for a role that's in Marvel. I think it's a bit of an odd choice, but I, I, I really think they did that. I'm, I'm starting to believe the whole, it was just a distraction. It was a mm-hmm. look over here. It was um, their uh, flourish as, as Vision would say. Like the engineer, which is kind of mm-hmm. like something to throw us off. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I think we might see the engineer. I'm holding out hope for the engineer. Fair, fair. Um, so that, uh, and then there's one more thing that someone on Twitter pointed out uh, is at Dipped in Words. Um, they said 
that as the show progresses, that you are watching the stages of grief represented in each episode in the episodes. Episodes one through two were denial, episodes three through four are anger, five through six were bargaining, episode seven is depression, episodes eight through nine are acceptance. I thought that was something also pretty deep that I thought was really cool to kind of f- to see that someone else found. I don't know about episode eight being acceptance. It looked, That's true. Like one was kind of depressed through most of that episode too. That's true. So. Um, they said that before episode eight came out. So say that again. Yeah, you know, um, Agnes goes, you're just on the verge. You're about to figure it out. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe eight is that transition point from depression into acceptance. Mm-hmm. I, I, I do like that. I, I love whenever we just the vibrant community that the Marvel universe has around it and the patterns and connections that people find that who knows if the directors and the writers even intended for them to be there. Right. It's really right. cool. The literary analysis that's going on here. People who did good in English are <laughs> definitely coming through for us. Cause I certainly did not clearly, as I said, did good in English. Is that grammatically correct? I have no idea. Yes. Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so episode eight was a doozy. Mm-hmm. Oh, geez. Um, episode eight, a lot happened. We start out in 1593. Oh, yes. 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 Okay. And that... Which was the year COVID started. <laughs> uh, it's it's <laughs> called Mark Hamill. Because ah. if, if we say that on YouTube, we'll get removed or whatever. Oh, Violence. yeah. We'll be removed yes, from the, ham- the... It's the Hamdemic. Here. <laughs> That's also from... Uh, episode two is called Mark Hamdemic because we said Mark Hamill 53 times in the episode. Yes. So that's what we refer uh, to it as, so we don't get blocked on YouTube. Yeah. If you are a listener, thanks. So oh, that episode sounds cool. Should go back and watch it if I haven't heard it yet. Uh, don't go back. It's just all. It's everything is so chaotic. <laughs> Nothing should ever be revisited here. Ever. No. Spend two hours of your life doing something a little more productive, please. I beg of you. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, so yes, so 1692, the year the pandemic started. It was 1693, I thought. Right. It was 1693. Uh, wow the wow Winston- you're a fake fan God. <laughs> i know i know uh, always it happened a, it was such an absurd like f- like uh flashback or backstory to provide in my opinion because it it didn't really add anything to agnes's character i didn't think like it basically showed she used she can use magic and it was kind of bad but we already knew that it didn't should, add anything more about how she like gained her powers or, or how she kind of turned evil or what happened. So apparently that the commercial from episode six, you know, the one with the, the yo magic, the yogurt that the kid couldn't get open. Yeah. Um, so apparently the commercial from episode six has to do with Agatha's scene at the beginning where she was sucking the life out of her coven with her magic. So the only way they survived was her magic or yo magic. I saw someone online say something about that. It kind of made some sense because the way she sucked mm-hmm. them dry of life. Interesting. Um, so in that was just so, a speculation, obviously. They'll tell us eventually. But in this comparison here, is Agnes the container of yogurt? That yeah, she's the container of yogurt. <laughs> they can't open because they're trying to kill her. But they. Hmm. It was just an interesting thing I saw online. Brennan, I agree with you saying it didn't really add much, except for two things. Oh. Um, the first one was all the magic that was going in was blue. And then at some point, um, Agnes or maybe something else protected her. I think there's there's something. It looked like she wasn't really in control of the magic turning purple. And then it turned. It seemed like there was somebody else going like shield protection, turn it into something. So there was something there. I think that might be alluding to something a little crazy and fan theorist that I can say later. Um, <laughs> but the other thing was her mom, the lead witch, the the witch president. I don't, I I don't know what they're terminology is for this master of the coven um had this little crown blue thing coming out whenever she was using her magic Mm -hmm. and that resembled wanda's halloween costume and also the vision that she had in the mind stone with the uh crown-esque uh starlet witch uh tiara that she wears interesting so i think That's the theory I had at the start of the episode, that maybe her mom was a type of Starlet Witch, a pseudo Starlet Witch, um, some super powerful one, and and maybe that's what we're trying to see of Agnes pursuing this sort of like crown queen witch head honcho. Um, But then she said, you're supposed to be a myth, and if her mom really was that powerful, she would know it wasn't a myth. So 
maybe there was something there. I like the Kiara, and I also like the fact that it seemed the magic that she flipped around wasn't necessarily her doing. So, did, did anyone else feel like that kind that particular part of the episode felt very Disney Channel esque, like a uh, Halloween Town slash uh, what was the other movie with the witches? Got, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Those two movies that mm-hmm. were made in that kind of era. It felt really not cheesy. But it, it, well, I don't think it was as good as it could have been, that, that little part of the episode. Um, I, it, I absolutely loved the part where um, six of, I'm going to guess, the most powerful like, uh, witches in the area, because I doubt they would be like, their least powerful. But like the six most <laughs> powerful came and they all focused their magic in on Agnes, who I'm going to assume to kill her. Mm-hmm. And then Agnes was able to turn all of that power back on them and basically like, like drain their life force. Um, and after uh, you know, her mom saw all of this, she was like, you know what I'm gonna do by myself to shoot my own laser uh, <laughs> into her. Like, I, I can't follow that train of logic. I, I don't know why she thought that would, would, would work. Um, that, was, that was like a fun beat where I was like, okay, so. <laughs> So I just think you establish the power dynamic that Adnis is much more powerful than your average witch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In the rest yeah. of the episode, established how weak Adnis was comparatively to the Scarlet Witch, to, to um, Wanda. Jeez, I can't. Uh, <laughs> I, I just kind of noticed something. Have you noticed that every magic user we've seen so far has a different color of magic? Yes, which I've actually... Uh, so I was talking to my brother about that after he watched uh, the episode and like he knows a lot about like like Marvel as well mm. and like he was like well yeah because there are because there are different power levels of magic and it's like the colors represent the power levels so you have like blue which is like one level and then purple is stronger than blue and red is stronger than like than like purple and I was like that makes a lot of sense what about gold like strange Actually. Um, that might be a different kind, or that's okay. just like the weakest kind. <laughs> um, gotcha, gotcha. I have I have no idea if that's even true, but it's but it's 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 a neat theory, and it would explain why, like the blue lost to the like to like the purple, and then why the purple is not as powerful as the red. Unfortunately, uh, that means that my favorite color, orange, uh, since red's the most powerful, has to be the least powerful. So not as as fond of that but oh well or maybe orange magic is even more rare it's just you know it it it, it does not even exist uh because it would it would it, uh, it would uh, be way too powerful uh but <laughs> who knows so in all of the mcu universe so far the infinity stones have played a big part and maybe i'm drawing this conclusion because there's only so many primary colors but every type of magic is a certain color of an infinity stone. Obviously, you have purple being power and then blue being space and red being uh, reality. But then in Doctor Strange, you had the orange, which is resemblant of the soul stone and the green, which obviously was time stone. And then vision, we saw Wanda's magic, chaos, whatever, turn to yellow in episode eight. And that is soul stone-esque. So, we see each of these specific color palettes represent and play out to very specific reality stones. So maybe it's because there's only so many primary colors, but maybe they are purposely doing that and trying to show those connections here. Maybe. That's, an, that's interesting. Yeah. Do you think um, when, you know, going along with that, when her, mad, when her magic turned to yellow and created vision, do you think she created another stone or at least like a, like a copy of a stone? Or do you think it's just... just because that's the stone that's in him, it just turned yellow. So, um, I think, let's say she made a stone. Um, I don't think it matters because I don't think Vision makes it out of this alive. Mm -hmm. Um, And the single biggest reason I have for that is because throughout everything, um, Disney has been very, if you wanna watch the movies, you don't have to watch everything. As a fan, you don't have to have watched Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. to to understand the difference between Avengers 1 and Age of Ultron. Uh, Even though Phil Coulson came back in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., he never comes back in any of the other movies because it would break the movie continuity. And Vision is gone. Vision is 
dead. He was completely destroyed, not once but twice in Infinity War. Um, he's dead, dead. He wasn't just snapped, he's gone. And I don't think that Disney, in the massive multi-billion dollar industry that it is, is going to force people to have to watch the movies in order or to watch the TV shows in order to understand the movies because they will lose viewership that way. I think right. no matter what happens in episode nine, um, we're talking about the white vision and the Wanda vision person. I don't think vision makes it out of this. Um, mm -hmm. Interesting. And I'm on the fence about Wanda's kids as well. Um, those seem like pretty crucial plot points to the character. Um, and I, I, I just can't see Disney putting that much emphasis on this show, even though it is big and it's, it's their primary thing right now. Not everyone has Disney Plus, and I think the film execs know that, and they aren't going to have some huge development off screen that just gets forced into people's mouth in movies. Well, but that's that's, that's why. Oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Okay, I was going to say that, like that is like a very unique perspective, and, and like that is, like yeah, that is a very important thing to remember. I th like I think when looking towards the, f the future because you have like a movie which is like you know you like, like you sit down once for like two hours you watch it and you have all of the information if there are a lot of movies you know you can still watch them in those segments and and, and seeing a tv show is way different from that if if, if they kept uh agents of shield as a interacts with the mcu that's like five seasons 20 episodes each they're all like an, an hour long that'd be way too much for the average viewer so in the train of thought i would i would think the same thing about wandavision as well. The only exception I would give is that I, I believe that Disney and Marvel have announced that like WandaVision is going to tie very heavily into Doctor Strange and the multiverse of madness. So perhaps as a result of, of that, uh, some, you know, characters, events, all that stuff do make it out of um, WandaVision and, and into the movie universe, but it will be definitely interesting to see how they handle it in Doctor Strange and the multiverse, if they kind of give like uh, flashbacks to WandaVisions for those who haven't seen the show or how they work all, all, all that out. Because it will be interesting to think of like if someone has seen like Doctor Strange 1 and wants to go right into Doctor Strange 2, it definitely is an obstacle to say, oh, you have to watch like, you know, six hours of a TV mm -hmm. show first. They could definitely do something like a prologue, kind of like um, what they did in Rogue One. Where they had, like that prologue and how they got uh, Jalen or so to come back and build the Death Star and whatever, um, they could do a prologue of like a couple scenes that are crucial to understanding the next and uh, to understanding um, the multiverse of madness. Um, what really we'll have to see because I mean you're right, um, we really don't know how they're gonna do that because I was gonna say they could do something like Star Wars did and just like have the shows there that you know if you like them go watch them. But because this plays such an integral role in it, and this is being made before the movie, whereas all the shows in Star Wars was made after the movies, um, it could be a little bit more difficult. So yeah, that's, that's interesting to think about. So, the other thing, just to add a little bit of weight to my side, um, I don't think it's necessary. Um, I think you can watch Infinity War, and I think you can watch Endgame, and then you can also watch WandaVision, or you can skip that. I, I, I think... The effect that WandaVision has, what we're going to see is this very depressed, slightly deranged, pro pro probably unstable Wanda uh, proceeding into Multiverse of Madness. And I think the Multiverse of Madness is in reference to Wanda and to who she is and to the state that she will be in. And Wanda Vision, this TV show, obviously sets that up very well. We've seen it so far. But if you take this out, I think we can understand that mental instability already. She lost her soulmate, not once, but twice. And then she came back. He was gone. She wasn't. She got to kill Thanos, but he already inflicted all of this pain. You can see that line and that instability and that just utter despair from just those two movies and just the 30, 40 odd minutes of screen time that she got across those two movies. And you don't have to have seen WandaVision in order to get that same conclusion. Do you have a better, deeper understanding that's more fun and more inclusive? Certainly, WandaVision definitely is adding something, and I'm not trying to say that it's not, but I don't think it's crucially necessary. It's, it, it has to be seen in order to understand how Wanda gets into there. I think you could very well see Doctor Strange 1, Infinity War, Endgame, and then go into Doctor Strange 2 and have all of the background information that you need, and I think that's designed purposely that way. Right, right. I agree, um, especially, and really, which is actually, which is why a lot of people didn't like Episode 9 
or I'm sorry, episode eight. We've got episode eight, uh, <laughs> episode say, eight I'm because the features that I don't have. I, I don't have the Wally World. Um, because it went back on things we knew about from previous movies. You know, uh, the uh, how Vision and Scarlet Witch fell in love, how they how their parents died. You know, the whole thing with the Stark bomb. The um, uh, what was the other? Uh, not Pietro's death. Oh, she got her powers. Yeah. How she got a power stuff. Oh, that's what it was. How she got a power. It's like we know that already. Yet, what well, the part wasn't necessarily needed. It was really cool in the grand scheme of the movie and just trying to figure out how she got to the point to where to make her own little pocket dimension or hex. Um, but you know, was it necessary to go through all that? Probably not. Um, I did like it though. You know, just to preface that. Now, all of those things have just been said. We've never seen them on camera. We like right. Ocean- House in the thing. Oh, her parents died. Oh, her her and Vision fell in love between Civil War or between Ultron and Civil War. Like we heard these things off camera. We never really saw them, so it was nice to see them. But yeah, you're right. We, these were things we already knew. It was just fun to to see them firsthand. Right, and it's all stuff where it, it's it's just time will tell how important one Vision ends up being for the future of the movies. You know what characters stick around what don't i mean we yeah, one of the things like you know with hanukkah R- rambo being uh what i think is going to be a character who sticks around like having powers i don't know if she'll ever make it back into any of the movies um, she's supposed to be in uh captain marvel 2 but we don't know what the time frame of captain marvel 2 will be if like that's it'll true. come that's true prior or after so it'll be interesting to see if like her powers ever show up in in the films themselves, but right, I think if she does show up, that's one place where like watching Wanda, there's no come in handy. It's like, oh, who is this person? How'd she get her powers? That's probably, I mean, that's probably one thing. Um, I don't know if it's absolutely necessary to like understand everything. I mean, I'm sure most people would be like, oh, cool, more superheroes. <laughs> yeah. So, but um, back to what happened in episode eight itself, because we just kind of like started introducing it, then we skipped over everything to talk about uh, the effect it has as a, as a whole. But does that, uh, it does, starts does that off, surprise you, Brennan? Um, no, it, it does not surprise <laughs> me. This is, this is extremely uh, typical, the general unsurprising uh, way we uh, navigate talking about everything here. Um, but in episode eight, essentially what like what happens if you haven't seen it i don't know why you're listening to this if you haven't seen it we're like you know like 45 minutes in <laughs> um, but she's in the basement of agnes uh and it's all spooky um and agnes is like you're a witch and she's like what are you talking about um wanda's like what do you mean i just you know i've i i have powers and uh agnes is like i gotta f- figure out how you uh you know why you're so powerful so let's travel through all of your uh memories here so they open up doors they walk through everything i thought it was so funny how they had to give wanda this backstory as to why she likes sitcoms like it was a it was it was, it was like a 45 minute backstory on why she likes like the dick van dyke show and malcolm in the middle and it's and it's like, yeah, like I yeah, like I get she wasn't like raised in America with like American culture and all that, so it's so it, it's not like expected that she has this and you know she's like exposed to, to all these shows, but you know when it's a classic show like the Dick Van Dyke Show, you don't necessarily have to like spoon feed me the reason why she likes this. I mean, it, it was very cool to get uh, to like see her watching it with her parents. And like, you know, the role they had and the emphasis that like they had, but it's also, it's like, it just felt like, 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 like they were like, oh, I bet the audience is curious as to why she likes this obscure show that no one's ever, like, ever heard of here. You know, like, like Dick Van Dyke, Modern Family, Bewitched, she's ever heard of those, you know, niche shows. We, we need to tell the audience, you know, where she found these, why she likes these, all this stuff. It, like, like the entire backstory, like it was kind of cool to see, but like episode four, I didn't like episode four because I thought it was like spoon feeding us too many solutions, too many answers here. I was kind of about the same. That, yeah. yeah, it had that same kind of vibe. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it does seem a little bit unnecessary, but I think that's one of the reasons, again, just going back to why the MCU is such a cool thing. 
because they take the time to explain things that at the end of the day, it's not a plot hole to think someone likes these movies and TV shows, even if they're from a different country and even if they're from a poor and impoverished country that might not have had those. I could have accepted that. That that isn't something that breaks the universe and my my understanding of this character, but it just goes to show how much care and thought and time that these filmmakers and directors and even the actors themselves are putting into making a story that is inclusive and is just so intricately woven. I, I, I think it just adds to the MCU and it makes me respect it even more. The fact that they would take some time to explain some small redundant detail that maybe 1% of the audience would even have a problem. I, I, I appreciate it. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, I would just like that. It's kind of unrelated to... Like, it's it's related to the episode, but kind of unrelated. Elizabeth Olsen, just kind of based off this episode alone... I mean, she's been great throughout the entire show, but I think she deserves an Emmy for this show. Like, she's been absolutely incredible. Um, And, you know, just her acting in this episode was just awesome and spot on. Um, Something... Well, I mean, if, if you want to continue on with... Uh, explaining the, the 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 story running of this episode, you can. But I did want to get to where she breaks into the sword facility, not breaks into. Okay, but. sure. I'll just kind of skip ahead through things then. But yes, yeah, so there's the scene where she's, uh, you know, she's with her parents, and then like the bomb comes and it lands, and it uh, like when you know it, uh, her parents die, but her and uh, her brother are alive, so they go hide underneath the bed. And another bomb appears. It is beeping like the toaster, mm-hmm. um, but it never goes off. And I, it was it was so funny when Agnes was like, "Ah, probability hex," and Wanda was like, "What are you talking about?" Because <laughs> I had the exact same reaction. I was like, "What do you mean a probability hex?" Like Wanda didn't even do anything in the flashback that we saw. Um, she started to reach her hand out, and then she was pulled out yeah. from underneath the ca- the the thing, which I guess yeah. in her memory. She reached out as if to like say stop and then cast the probability hex somehow. Yeah. So which led us to believe that she already had power powers before. Yeah, um, it's, she was a. It, that does seem to be the theory. Mm-hmm. It's kind of interesting because that seems to be what the show is trying to tell us through Agnes watching these events play out. But like as an audience member, I'm not convinced of it. But like I know that I'm supposed to be like. Interesting. Yeah, convinced of it. They didn't really do a good job of like you know giving me proof they were just like oh here's someone who's watching this saying that you know she has magic and i was like i guess she has magic um but anyway so it skips from that scene and they go up forward in time some and she's volunteering uh, at 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 hydra it's a scene where she gets her powers and she's like you know the stone some shadowy figure comes out they've lingered in that scene for a while so i'm sure there's some sig- significance behind who that was someone said that it was um wanda seeing her full potential because everything that we saw wanda see the, the experiment the people who were running the experiment didn't see that that was all in wanda's head um and that they, that wanda was seeing her potential and what she can become and that would be the scarlet which i think reese you hinted through that a little bit earlier yeah yeah i i i, I think that that was the Infinity Stone showing her what she could become through the Infinity Stone. Because that. that's the Mind Stone, right? Mind, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it is an Infinity Stone, but specifically. Well, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I was just wondering because um, it was showing her. Yeah, I was just making sure. And that is that is something I, I don't fully have it fleshed out in my head, but I think the Mind Stone likes Wander. It clearly has some sort of an attraction <laughs> to her. Um, they, they, they talk, they just said, it's never done that before. It's killed everybody. Like, I think the, that Mind Stone, the Mind Stone, that Infinity Stone, saw that and Wanda recognized her power and potential and has some innate inherent attraction to her. And I'll go one step further and say, that's why Vision likes her. Yeah. And Vision likes Wanda because the Infinity Stone in her head, because that Mind Stone likes her as well. Um, Interesting. Because Vision is this amalgamation of Tony Stark and Bruce Banner and, and, and um, Jarvis and Ultron and all of these parts, including the Mind Stone. Um, the Mind Stone part of him is who likes Wanda. Why would a robot like anybody? Ultron didn't love anyone. I think now that we see this potential white um, Vision without the Infinity Stone, I don't think it'll care for Wanda at all because I don't think Vision loves Wanda. I think the Mind Stone loves Wanda. Oh, wow. Interesting. In that attraction. And also, going off your earlier question, do I think that Wanda created a new Infinity Stone? 
I don't. I think she's powerful, but I don't think she's that powerful. I think there has to be a limit at some point. Otherwise, we'll just get Endgame and Infinity War Part 2 if there's just another section of Infinity Stones. I don't think she created Vision with another one. I think she had that pseudo one, kind of like in the in that little blip in the 70s episode where she saw him with a hole in his head. I don't think the Infinity Stone is there. And I, and I think that might be why some of this angst and anger from Vision is coming. She said, you've never spoken to me like that before. Well, the reason why she, he'd never spoken to her like that before is because he had the Infinity Stone before. Oh. And the Mind Stone liked it. So now that he doesn't have the Mind Stone, now that that isn't a part of his amalgamation of consciousness and minds and bodies, he doesn't like it the same way. And it's only Wanda's mind control in Westview that's keeping him tied there. And once wow. that's done, Vision's out. There's no more Wanda Vision anymore. I am not I sure like if I that. would go quite that far because, like, I I don't think there is some kind of of like attraction between Wanda and Vision still, even if it is I could be just wrong. the Mind Stone, because you know, like, Wanda basically created Vision with the power she got from the Mind Stone. So it's like he obviously would solve some of the Mind Stone in them. So even if it is only the Mind Stone that's causing that, like, attraction, I, I like I think he would have it still. I think even with Vision, everything is like more complex tied together intertwined for it to be as simple as like oh he only likes you know someone because of this one element of him that likes someone i think everything is like way too uh tangled up for it to be only that but again only time will tell we'll see how things are in episode nine I think maybe the stone originally did like her and that's, that was his main attraction to her. And then his programming, you know, up or not updated, but like evolved itself a little bit to become attracted to her um, to where, you know, where both of your kind of your um, theories are right. Um, so that is, that is interesting. Um, I'm very excited to see. Oh, sorry. Uh, Reese. Yes. I was just saying maybe I'm, I'm too far out in left field. Um, that might be a bit heartbreaking for people to see and then to find out the love was never real. I, that, that, that also might be too heavy hitting of a, of a thing for Marvel to put out there. Um, so I could be a little bonkers with my theory here, but I like it. And I have so far haven't heard anyone else online or any other of these big fan theory channels talk about that that's the reason of the attraction. So yeah, I'm, I I'm mean, my Jones here. Okay. And like, I, for one, I definitely think like, like, you know, the emotional connection that they have is real. It isn't just one element, but it's, but like, it's vision, the combination, the individual that, like that he is truly liking Wanda. Uh, but like the whole idea of like, you know, one of the infinity stones being able to like an individual, uh, that is a cool theory. I cannot wait until we see Rocket Raccoon in the Space Stone so start going out on like a date. Uh, you know, that's okay. uh, so they Rocket have ex- Raccoon Volume 4. They uh, have like, explored like, that a little bit in, in the comics where uh, 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 oh, wow. an Infinity Stone takes a liking to someone. There's actually, it's a bad guy. Ga- they've become a villain, but there is a person, I read their little run of comics named, I want to say she was named Star. And she, uh, the what's the red stone i forget what it's called yeah. reality reality stone binds yeah. with her like and her, like oh. her human and like she gets her powers from the from the reality stone because it 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 because it liked it like linked with her in some way so uh, that's actually not too far off the beaten path um but when we get to white vision i think uh from the comics i think reese's theory will hold up a little bit more but we'll, we'll get there uh, so anyway, you know, just jump into the next thing, like the next thing it jumps to is like after her brother has died and she is talking to Vision, they share a nice conversation while they're watching a some sitcom. I didn't actually catch which sitcom Malcolm that one was. Yeah, it, it was. All right. Mm-hmm. And Brian, he laughed. Brian Malcolm Prince is new canon. And the MCU, yes. Which is an important addition that I think we all need to realize and know. Can you? And, well, Yo Gabba Gabba was in. Yo uh, Gabba Gabba as well. Yo Gabba Gabba is in the MCU Um, (laughs) Yes But anyway the whole exchange She was having with Vision there There was the absolute Iconic line of like how Grief Is just love that has Persevered and it's like wow Oh man I mean like I was not expecting Yeah like that one like hit right there I love that 
before we keep going any further, because we've gotten past all like the really emotional, sad scenes, mm-hmm. is it bad I felt nothing? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't feel anything until like people pointed it out, which was on after my second rewatch. Yes, I Horrible watched it twice person. and felt nothing. Um, Horrible person. <laughs> the thing you that you evaluate your life choices. <laughs> you need to watch Infinity War in the middle of depression, and then you will understand. Put yourself in Wanda's shoes, Wally. Come on, feel. Uh, well, I did. Like, after, like I said, after the after the second watch through, after people started pointing things out, I'm like, all right, now I have feelings. But I, I was I was too I was too concentrated on trying to pick out Easter eggs that I just forgot to feel. <laughs> I'm I'm still waiting for the Stan Lee cameo. Oh, God. oh. <laughs> I thought about that too. That's sad too. Okay. Like he's he might not be in it, or I don't know. Maybe That's not hurts. Be white vision yet you still have some feelings okay <laughs> um it, okay just just a thought what if the luke skywalker level cameo um uh, like elizabeth olsen was talking about is stanley what if they just cgi'd stanley like they cgi luke skywalker they need to just do that anyway they just need to start cgiing stanley into the movies and TV shows because it's going to be too sad without him. Well, I mean, um, Wait, was he in Far From Home? I don't. Not. I don't believe was, so. He was in um, Captain Marvel. He was. And he was he was dead at the time that scene was filmed. He was recomped in. They have this clever newspaper trick where he's hiding behind a newspaper, and then they cut to him with a very, very, very similar background, um, and he says hello. But it was a rejected use for a previous Marvel film that they fit in. Mm, that whole train gotcha. scene chasing the stroll is a little bit odd and seems like, how are they? Why are they on a train? And it's 100% to fit that old bit from Stanley. They should take old like X Men and Fantastic Four cameos and just put them in the new ones. Or just, just keep reusing the same. Or, yeah, that works too. Yep, just. just- Every Marvel property from now on takes place on a train at some moment in time in the series. That exact same scene just <laughs> literally just inserted into the, every Marvel movie. The best way they could have done the cameo was when they were sweeping through uh, Westview and changing it to the 1950s. That would have been the prime opportunity to, to have done a Stan Lee. Because uh, then you would have just had to use someone who looked like his younger self. Or, or, or all they could have done, which would have been probably the easiest, is when they were like trying to identify everyone in Westview, just on like the board, just like tacked up a picture of, yeah, like, of, of, of Stanley. You don't have to, you know, it, yeah. would, it would still be a neat kind of homage, but it, it's, it's, I don't know, it's that, still, still kind of going a bit too far because it's like, you know, obviously he wasn't actually there. So uh, it, it just feels kind of weird. You know, it's like this empty hole, but I don't, I don't think we should try to like, to like jam something back in there. Yeah, it well, something isn't beautiful because it lasts. It's beautiful because it's temporary, right? Exactly. And yeah. it was a huge part of all three of our lives and countless other individuals. And, and the fact that they respected him and paid so much tribute to him thus far. Oh, yeah. And I think ending that is even more respectful and just saying that this is all. Instead of just CGIing him into random parts of movies yeah you don't want to get to the uncanny valley valley with that you don't want to get become like a laugh bit meme level i think mm-hmm. ending it here is a cool way to do it yeah that's Absolutely. true very true um so the man this has been a very deep episode yeah. all right <laughs> reese coming in with the with the depth for this for this show it's the depth that it needed <laughs> um so the next part it takes place well uh, she op- uh, Agatha opens the door to the sword uh, facility uh, between when this show started yes. and Infinity War. Who knows what the time difference was? Mm-hmm. Uh, people looked up at the little news thing. And it was the same news that Monica Rambeau walked in the sword facility on. So maybe it could have been a couple days before that. Um, uh, we know it's at least between two to three weeks later. Yeah. Uh, and one thing I will say is. Um, Oh yeah, well, because yeah, this is the scene where we're supposed to think that Wanda comes in and steals the Vision's body because we were led mm-hmm. to believe in a previous episode that Wanda came into the sword facility and stole Vision's body. Um, I'll let you take it back from like 
from there. Well, I just wanted to include that now. So when I say something uh, in a bit, it'll make more sense. Gotcha. Yeah. So basically she walks in, she's like, de- like demanding to go in, they won't let her in. And then eventually they, they realize it's like, she could become a threat if they don't let her in. And she's like, all right, you can go in. And then she, she kind of like throws open the door after she, after the guy's like, Hey, I need to let you in. She's like, no, nah, it's okay. And then she goes right into director. What is his name? Doesn't matter. Terrorist. Hayward. <laughs> Hayward. Director Terrorist. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> director Hayward's office. And uh, basically he says, come here. This is vision. He's, we pulled him apart and going kind to of salvage him for parts. At least that's what he made it seem like. Um, and she's just like, I need to bury him. She's like, nah, that's $3 billion worth of vibranium. We would, we kind of need that or something. Um, and then she breaks the glass goes down and which I think might be the most heart wrenching part for most people is when she goes and tries to feel vision and she can't. Um, I don't know how I didn't feel anything there. I think I'm going to go, go back and rewatch it so I can. Um, uh, but but yeah. one thing I will say is like what you said uh, just now is like, you know, when she's out there, you know, trying to get in the reason that they let her in is, is because they're like, oh, she could like do some harm here. We just need to kind of let her in. That's not what I think happened. Mm-hmm. I think it was because the director really, really, really wanted her to bring Vision back to life. Mm, which they allude to later. Yeah. Yeah. Because it seems like literally when they're having that whole conversation right before she breaks the glass, he is egging her on. He, he is like, you could bring him back to life. You have the power. Come on. He's your one true love. He does kind of show his hand there. And I think that I, Brennan, I think you're spot on the money right here. Um, it's been five years since the events of Infinity War. And now they're just taking them apart. And they're just in the parts of literally pulling them apart. I don't know. It seems like somebody's butcher shop. I mean, it, 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 it doesn't seem very high tech. You've had five years and all you've managed to do is separate torso from legs. I think they're purposely trying to evoke this image here. I think they are purposely, this is Haywood trying to get one of the emotional trying to get her to bring back and do what he can and what he hasn't been able to over the last five years. I Absolutely. think this is him, his final last dip, ditch attempt to get Vision up and running because he hasn't been able to in the past. I didn't even <laughs> put that together, that it had been five years for everyone else. Because I'm looking through the lens of, of Wanda. It's been like three weeks for her mm-hmm. since she reappeared. No, yeah. It's, 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 it's been, been five years. years. Yeah. <laughs> Iron Man traded 17 different suits in that amount. Like you, you're telling me you can yeah, only kid. separate legs from torso that, that five years? I get it's vibranium, but like, come on, like what? That's true. I and, think about that. I don't know. I, I think I think Brennan, you're spot on. I think Haywood was trying to get us to do that. Um, but it does. It does. It's so far it's the only plot hole I've seen, and maybe it'll get cleared up in um, in episode nine. But when Haywood sends Monica Rambo out, he doesn't know about Vision. Just he still has Vision. All he knows is Wanda stormed off and his plan didn't work. And the, the idea that this was set up as a way to get vision it doesn't really make sense because it was initially a missing persons case, which to date, we haven't, we haven't figured out who the missing person is. There were some fan theories at the beginning that it was a mailman, but we see the mailman in the city. Like, could it, could it be, who, know who the missing person is? Could it could be Pietro? Be, maybe. But like, <laughs> I don't think so. If it's fake Pietro, then he's 100% not from another universe. Because, or Pietro. Uh, why, why would you have a missing person. I don't know. The whole thing's just a little odd and funky, and there's a lot of answers that need to be given in episode nine for this to make sense in my head. It's just kind of like a huge coincidence right now. There's like, oh, there happened to be this missing person case, which was where Wanda ended up being. And Was Wanda the missing person? No, no. There was someone specific who is in the witness protection program who okay. was in Westview, who they were trying to, you know, make, like, stay in contact with, and all of a sudden they couldn't. So, um, and that's from San Francisco, Jimmy Wu is looking for. what from that's- San Francisco? Oh, sorry, no, no, there was someone who was just he was in Westview. I don't like we don't know anything else about him other than he was in the witness protection program and then- literally like a total of five lines so far. Mm-hmm. And they've been throwaways. That was the initial motivation to send Monica Rambo, and then yep. Jimmy Wu is who confirms it. Um, Beyond that, yeah, it's just been a coincidence that Sword's there at all, that they even know about this. Because all the locals don't know. I mean, like, Sword absolutely came there after they heard Monica Rambo got sucked into, like, some magic thing. Um, 
but yeah, just the fact that like they discovered that vision was there and then like, you know, uh, the director came out and got this larger scale operation. Wait, okay. So how, how are they tracking vision? Like the, the Wanda, Wanda's vision. Uh, because he's, he's still not real. He's not, uh, be, because he, he is real. Like, like Wanda actually made him. He's made of, 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 of vibranium. So okay. they're tracking him through the UK yeah. signature of the vibranium that, he, gotcha. that he's made of. Gotcha. Okay. So at the very least, she can create three billion dollars of vibranium. <laughs> Midas oh, has nothing on her. You might be able to make gold, but I can make vibranium snap on my fingers. So I might not be able to make you finish stone. Hundred percent can make three billion dollars of vibranium. So if I can't remember if Eustace Claw is dead, but like if he was going after vibranium and he knew about Wanda, like why didn't he just go after her? And especially Ooh. now. Yeah. Let's go after Wanda. Forget getting into Wakanda. He is dead now, though. I think he, he is? Dead. Okay. Yeah. I, think, I think T'Challa. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. That's right. No. That's right. No, no, no. It was... Uh, but it was like someone else. In the bad guy. The uh, Michael B. Jordan's character. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Killmonger. Yeah. He killed him. Ah, I see that. <laughs> I'm connected. Um, but anyway, so yeah, this whole scene. Let me just say, I was very glad when she did not take his body from there because you know in in episode four, four. uh you have like it's in the 70s and one like looks at vision and then for a moment he's like dead he has the hole in his head he's like it's 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 it's, it's, it's the lifeless color and i was like it was such a cool visual but i was like please don't tell me she actually reanimated his course because they, like mental health wise, there's no going back from like like from that. You're never gonna be like mentally stable again if you reanimated the corpse of like your dead. It's Frank. Husband, Frank I guess technically Frank. now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you, she's like coming back from this anyway. <laughs> Just so, much less with that. <laughs> at least now she has hope because she didn't. It's it's like this is technically a different individual like he's not dead mm -hmm. she mm -hmm. made him which is stranger almost but it's not as bad it's um, like assembling a, it's like walking around with a mannequin yes i am very excited for the uh the inevitable vision versus vision face-off we will get in episode nine because you yes. know that has to happen now exactly yeah arc reactor on the head versus tiny fake infinity stuff <laughs> um, speaking of superior um what do you guys think of uh director tyler hayward is he a morally defensible character is no. he just a, a weak a, bad guy with no bad story or is he something more complex he definitely has um the backstory that's requ that's required for a character like like him i wouldn't expect them to include any more you know like I don't want a 45 minute flashback episode where they go through like, you know, why he hates sitcoms. <laughs> <laughs> I want that. So it can better be <laughs> Hayward versus sitcom. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, that'd be fantastic. I would, I, I would definitely watch it. Then I would come into this podcast and, and <laughs> complain about it, but it would, it so, would be a fun watch. So remember Hammer? Justin Hammer from episode from uh, not episode yes. three, uh, from Iron Man three was Iron Man three Iron or was it two? Two. Iron Man two. Yep. He's an operative for Hammer, or AIM, whichever. Oh, that's just he... I don't know. I just threw that out there. I literally just thought of it. Oh, okay. I'm just throwing okay. that out there. Hmm. It could um, be a possibility. He works for either AIM, which is an arm of Hydra. I, I, I don't think he works for either. I think he's just you know a he just bad hates, dude. Just hates and... superheroes. Who like has? I don't think he hates them. He just wants power. He wants he wants like weapons, sentient weapons. Do you know I, Reese? I, I I disagree with both of you. Okay. I think he's an independent actor. Um, he could be tied to the name. He could be tied to Justin Hammer. I think that's really pulling back. Um, and that'll sure. be hard for Marvel to go to to the average fan. I mean, you kind of have to be podcast level on Paramount. <laughs> you have understood that, but. <laughs> Um, I I like him. I think he's a morally defensible person, at least as far as if you think Iron Man was a morally defensible person. I think what Haywood is trying to do here is very similar to what Iron Man is trying to do in Age of Ultron, 
Um, I think that he, all he's trying to do is protect people. He's trying to make this sentient weapon, this this suit of armor around the world. Is he a little bit humanity first, alien genocidal kind of guy? Maybe. I mean, but that's probably well placed for the time period. Um, and I think the idea of I just want to protect people and I don't care how I do that isn't necessarily a bad idea. I mean, I get the whole Captain America every time you try to end wars before they begin, someone innocent ends up dying. So Marvel has already put out its death sentence on this line of action. They've already condemned Iron Man as being wrong in that. So Haywood's just a follow-up to it. But I don't think it's even a weak backstory or, or a morally indefensible one. I think it's, like you said, the perfect amount of flesh out for a villain this bad. But I don't think he's, he's a weak write-off character. I think he's just what the show needs. And I, I really like his inclusion there as just a normal guy trying his best to save the world. Okay. I have a question then. Do yeah. you think he comes back as an, as an antagonist in a different show like Armor Wars? Nah, maybe. Maybe. Um, he clearly is going to be the antagonist set up here. Right. Um, it's, it's between him and Agnes right now. And while Agnes in the comics was pretty morally gray, she really was a good anti-hero. Um, I think in this, this TV show, she's going to be the main villain. Because like Brennan said beforehand, there have been lines and things that have pointed out that Wanda has to end up being the good guy. Maybe a mentally unstable good guy, but she can't end up being the bad guy mm -hmm. um, and have this just be the MCU. It's, it's not the DC universe. It, it's, it's a little <laughs> bit more than that. Mar Wanda's not going to end up being the main bad guy, yeah. which means Haywood is going to be this secondary antagonist um, third party kind of jump in. Um, he might unite the witches. He might not. I don't fully know. But I do think he's going to end up being an antagonist. And I don't think he's going to have direct the Tyler Haywood spinoff show. <laughs> I, I can't really see that. I also you... really hope there's not an episode 10 with 45 minutes of I hate sitcoms. Right, right, right. <laughs> do you, uh, what was, oh God, I had a question. Sorry. Oh, I'm... No, you're good. No, that's what I mean. I do that all the time. Brennan does that all the time. That's fine. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that uh, Agatha is working by herself or with someone else? Because there's just been this whole Mephisto nightmare kind of thing that's swirling around. And after this episode, I don't think that's true at all, personally. I don't think she, I think she's working by herself. I've never liked the Mephisto argument. I, the, bringing the literal devil into the MCU is a little bit crazy i mean i think we gotta wait to at least 2050 2060 before we start playing <laughs> but like I, I just don't see it um right. we don't we only have so much time of the show left and nightmare is already rumored to be doc Night nightmare was primarily dr strange's nemesis in the comics i think he's going to be set up especially from the rumors that have been multiverse of madness i think we might see this three team power struggle with wanda and Doctor Strange and Nightmare. I don't think Nightmare's coming into this. And I'll honestly be a little bit annoyed if the devil comes into WandaVision. I get that Mr. Scratch is an analogy for the devil. It was a nickname at one point and Senior Scratchy the rabbit. And some people are saying maybe Senior Scratchy is like the devil and that she <laughs> might want to like bring the devil out of the rabbit, whatever. Like Brennan's mind is blown. I totally I, miss that people used to call, like, yeah, the name for the devil was old scratch mm -hmm. and you have a rabbit named scratchy that's that's yeah. really funny i i never connected those dots i really hope not i connected them and i was like oh no <laughs> so i i, I just I, I i love the cinematic universe i love the comic books it's what i've grown up on but i, I think there's a little bit too holding your horses and going slow and i think everyone is thinking that wandavision is marvel like pressing the gas pedal down, lighting the rocket engine, and just poof, zooming out of left field. Um, I, I just, I hope they don't. Yeah, well, that goes, that goes, you know, what she, what she said about the um, putting down the gas pedal with people thinking, oh, they're going to introduce the X-Men, they're going to introduce Fantastic Four, they're going to do this with uh, Mephisto, they're going to do this with Nightmare. They can only, they, they only have so much time. Like, you don't want to shove everything in a one. 40-minute episodes. Right. Yeah, not a lot. Right. Um, also, in the comics, Agatha has a son named Nicholas Scratch, who is another person that people think Scratch, Scratch Senior Scratch is. I think they're just throwing a joke in there. People, uh, yeah, the, the the bunnies probably just could just be her uh, companion in this 
universe because in the comic books she's a cat. She's a cat. I like the cat. I like the cat, especially since we saw like eat the bird. That's a very cat thing to do, and the cat can turn into a panther. So maybe it's a bunny turning into a panther. We might have something like that. I I just I, I don't know. It's it's Mark Hamill as a cat <laughs> as a rabbit. <laughs> Ugh. He he's a talented man, Reese. I don't think you really I don't I don't know if you knew how talented he was. Yes, of acting. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so anyway, um, after they have the whole scene where um Wanda sees Vision and realizes that he's dead, uh that there's nothing she she can do. She goes back to her car, there's a little envelope in uh in there. I I I don't know how it got there. I'm, it's implied, I guess, someone from S.W.O.R.D. put it into it, to her car while she was gone, or, or, or maybe she had it in her car the whole time from, from, from Vision. But anyway, she goes to Westview. It's something to, to, to go to Westview to a specific plot of land. She goes there. She opens everything up fully, and it's blueprints for a house for her and Vision to it's live in, yeah. to grow old in. It's like signed, you know, from Vision, you know, with love, and oh, that, that I like, like, uh, I was that's that just like hit in the heart, right there, and you know, I could tell like the pain sh- she was feeling. She falls to her knees and she literally lets out like all of her power and everything forms around her, like like the hex forms, mm-hmm. um, and she creates Vision from that. I. I love it so much where it's like the set of the Dick Van Dyke show and it goes and it shows that there's actually like a set with the stage lighting and all that. Agnes is in the audience. Uh, it, was, it was a very cool way of seeing it. It like f- flipped, seeing how that show would actually have been f- filmed. She, uh, so Agnes teleports away. Wanda runs outside. She's hearing cries from her children. Uh, Agnes is like holding children hostage and she's like, I know who you are now. And and there's this huge big re- reveal, like right before the episode ends, where Agnes is like is like you are the Scarlet Witch, and Which... I just I just found that so funny, just the way it was delivered, everything. I just it just because it's like right now just as audience members, that doesn't mean anything. We're not told really what like a Scarlet Witch is, what the significance is, and it came off to me as like in episode nine of Star Wars, how it ends with like, you know, with like Ray, how someone's like, you know, oh, what's your last name, Ray? And she's like Ray Skywalker. And it's, it's in, and as the audience, you know, it's like, we, you know, we know the significance of, of like of the Skywalker name. We know the significance of like, you know, the character, the Sc- Scarlet Witch, you know, that was her name in the comic books but it's like in universe that's it's so meaningless there's no huge like reveal by it it's had that exact same vibe and i loved it so much i thought episode eight was just so chaotic and and and, and how like it just it like held our hand the entire way through trying to explain things to us that we really didn't need to explain and, and at the very end it just dropped this huge bomb that you know the people who know that wanda's superhero name is scarlet witch it like it's like this really cool little nod to that, but in universe, it literally doesn't mean anything until that's explained to Wanda to everybody what that means. Yeah, no, I get that. It also coincidentally is the first time we ever hear Scarlet White, which name dropped in the MCU. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my friends brought that up to me, and I was like, really? And I went back and rewatched Age of Ultron and Civil War and Infinity War and <laughs> Endgame. So I had a very productive weekend. Um, as you can tell. Um, First time it's been used. Also, the first time Chaos Magic has been name dropped. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it does seem a little random and misplaced. You, again, speaking really well, Brennan, um, that hit the nail on the head. That is exactly what it is. It seemed a little cheesy to me as well. Um, but I liked it. I mean, call it what it is. It is fan service. But at the end of the day, I'm a fan and I want some service every once in a while. <laughs> I, um, even if it is cheesy and silly and Star Wars Ray Skywalker esque. <laughs> yeah that's uh that's a good way to put it so then then we got an end credit scene the second one so mm-hmm. far um and basically Hayward, hayward's like ready to launch and they have they still have the the drone that wanda dragged out that's covered in her magic and they're able to siphon the, the the magic off of that and into white vision um so brennan uh, you i've not read this particular comic but uh, i've seen it everywhere now but uh white vision and the comics 
Um, and this kind of goes back to what we were saying earlier about the Infinity Stone. He has not like I can't remember if he doesn't have any of Vision's memories, but he's basically just looks at. Yeah, he has no emotions. He looks at Wanda. Yeah, he looks at Wanda, and he's like, "I don't love you. You're not my wife. Your kids, they're not mine." See ya. Oh wow. Or something like that, right? I didn't know that. Oh, okay. That even more weight to my whole. He doesn't love her because he doesn't have the stone. The stone mm. loves her. Vision doesn't. I like yeah. it. Honestly, at the end of Infinity War, that's what I thought this was. I thought that gray vision was the MCU version of the white emotionless vision. I'm like, we're getting gray vision. He's alive. He's just sleepy. Like, I, I thought, <laughs> and that's what Infinity. I mean, Endgame was gonna be. We're gonna have gray vision. You know what? That that brings up a. You bring up a good point because, like, you remember how they were trying to remove the Infinity Stone from Vision mm-hmm. before he went out and fought. Mm-hmm. Would we have? Would that have introduced the if they were able, if they were successful, which it would have, not, which obviously for story's sake they would not have been successful. Would he have still loved Wanda after that? And I think at this point we're seeing that no, he wouldn't have. See, see, I still believe yes. I still believe he would have. But I think everything is like too complex for that. And I believe the difference between like the white vision here and the vision that like that Wanda created is not just as simple as like stone or, or, or no stone. I think it's, I, I think more has to, has to do with the vision that Wanda created the original vision that like, like that there was, he was created to be an individual and white vision was created, designed, reconstructed to be a, like a weapon and a weapon alone, Ultra, not a right? person, but just a, 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 like, like a weapon that looks like a person. A lot of people think this that the, the what they put back into White Vision is Ultron. Yeah, I I'm not, I don't I don't buy that, but that's I just mean me. the I can see that the little diamondy triangle thing that uh, Iron Man's had in the last couple movies. Oh, interesting. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I mean. But yeah, now we currently have Agnes, uh, Wanda. Uh, Vision, White Vision, Monica Rambeau, uh, uh, Quicksilver, but not Quicksilver, uh, RC, um, uh, Jimmy Woo. Uh, How have we not bought the twins this entire time? We need to speak about twins. Yeah. The oh, twins yeah. The who, twins were taken. <laughs> yeah, like, we have all these character threads that are all going to have to be resolved in the next episode. The next like half hour episode, we're going to have at least 10 character threads that need to be fixed. Um, and for that, I do have a question for you guys, not necessarily about the next episode, but how this affects everything. So we know that this takes place three weeks after the blip, as they call it yeah. in the universe. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Spider Man 2 takes place eight months after the blip and supposedly WandaVision is supposed to tie into Spider-Man 3. How? Because nothing seemed different in in Spider-Man 2. There is a theory out, but I want to hear what you guys have to say first. I've actually thought a lot about this and I've come up with a very solid answer. I have no idea. (laughs) I can't, I like, I, it seems like this is way too big of an event to like not have altered the course of Spider-Man 2 but one that does al- alter the course of Spider-Man 3 so like I'm, I, like I'm not sure how they'll fit all of this in that's, okay. that's, that's all I have <laughs> um, again I'm referring to the wizard here uh, I think Brennan's right um, <laughs> at the end of the day we are having problems predicting the events of episode 9 and we so to predict the impact this whole series has on another movie without even knowing how this series ends is going to be really hard. Because if the series ends with everyone getting snapped again, well, then it makes no sense, right? But if the series ends with they got encapsulated for eight months and they, they popped out right after Spider-Man 2, well, all of a sudden it makes sense why it didn't impact Spider-Man 2. Like, I, I really think we have to understand the events of episode nine before sure. we can finish that. Um, so my theory, which is not the theory I was referring to, my theory is that Spider-Man 3 happens before Spider-Man 2. We're throwing a Star Wars thing in there where the ones that came out later happened before the ones that came out first. Um, <laughs> uh, that's stupid. It makes no sense. But that was my original theory. Oh, um, man. The, the next one, uh, Reese, have you read the House of M comics? 
Uh, I do. I've looked at him because of this. Okay. I had not beforehand. Me too. So, you know, remember how no one remembered anything at, when Wanda changed the universe, like, the first time? Mm-hmm. So someone online said that um, Sp- Spider-Man 2 takes place in a different dem- universe, which is why J. Jonah Jameson is there, the one from the original Spider-Man. And that, uh, ev- and that no one remembers that happening because just like in House of M, everyone's oblivious to it. And that maybe in Spider-Man 3, people become aware because of some... Because in the comic, um, there's a mutant girl who was aware. And if, they, if that girl touched you, you became aware of it. That, you, that this was not your regular life. Um, that's just a theory that's out there. Because uh, I'm with you guys. I have no idea how this affects number two. And I think we're in a, a Spider-Man 2. And we're going to have to see from episode 9. Yeah. Unless they plan that far in advance. And they know already. But... Yeah. Um. One thing I do want to ask, have you guys heard of Wiccan and Speed? Yes. Yes. I had not until Wally told me about them uh, an episode or two ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think at first I thought Wiccan and Speed were going to be the start of the X-Men and Quicksilver was the bringing in of the multiverse and that we're going to get the full X-Men in here and um, the X-Men first class, the new Professor X and Magnetos are going to get pulled into this version. Um, I no longer think that, kind of what I said beforehand. Uh, they want to establish continuity across movies and not let TV shows supersede that. Um, I think that Billy and Tommy will not make it out. And I think whenever Monica ends this whole wow. thing, Billy and Tommy are bye-bye, and that'll just continue to add to the trauma of Wanda and mm-hmm. finally push over the edge into true um, madness, just like the title of Doctor Strange is. The Multiverse of Madness. The multiverse yeah. of madness. And the madness in that specifically is talking to Wanda at the loss of not vision once, not vision twice, but vision three and four times as Wanda Vision and um, White Vision both die before her eyes. Um, and then she loses Billy and Tommy. She is going to be a walking um, sight world. world. Um, she, she will not be able to handle anything. Wicked and Speed are not Billy and Tommy. They're all dead. So I am currently mm-hmm. of the belief actually to contradict that that uh her children um will make it out of it uh alive because i think i still do believe that i think what marvel is trying to set up is like a young avengers type thing or a young hero type thing and like and 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 i think they would be a perfect fit to all of that so so like if not for the fact that like i do believe marvel is setting up a a Avengers type thing, I may be more inclined to agree with you, but I think because they are setting all of that up, and also because I I don't think Marvel is currently uh, that heartless to introduce two child characters only to kill them off a a couple episodes later, especially because you know it's been established in universe that like they are real, they were really born, they do exist as individuals. Uh, I I. I don't think it makes sense for them to get killed off. Now, I think your side makes more sense and is more logically correct. <laughs> and ultimately, what's going to happen. But as the guest on this podcast, it is my role and my responsibility, even, um, to put outlandish theories out for you guys to, to bash the next week after this. So I'm just trying to play my part here. And I want to give you some fuel and some fodder to bash the next episode. So, <laughs> just so you can bash me later. Everybody dies. Vision, Billy, Tommy, gone. MCU ends here. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. 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 Wanda just engulfs everything, and then it just all the Dick Van Dyke show. That, that, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Perfect. Or it's, or it's like the line we got in episode eight, where like she was talking about one of the episodes of Dick Van Dyke, and she was like, "Oh yeah, it's all just a dream." This was there's just a nod to like you know that the fact that everything that's 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 happened is just a dream. It's actually uh, Wanda wakes up and she's like nine years old still. And oh. all of the events of all of the MCU uh, were all in our mind. <laughs> except Captain America. <laughs> yes, except for Captain America. And the first Marvel. Captain Marvel. Yes, that's true. That, that would be a giant punch in the face. That's, that's almost as bad as How I Met Your Mother out, uh, last uh, season finale, or show finale. Because that, I, I'm taking that neither of you watched that, so. Nope. I have not seen it yet. I have good. The last episode makes the entire series irrelevant. 
it's been recommended to me so many times, but I've just never, you know, it's, it's much like, like it's, it's, it's much like Star Wars Rebels where it has to be recommended to me 27 <laughs> times before I watch it. It's a great show, yeah. was it not? The scientist they're talking about is Thrawn. Thrawn comes in. So yes, <laughs> Thrawn. <laughs> yes. That's where they went. The space whales took them to Earth. There we go. <laughs> so I believe uh, that wraps up all the discussion for WandaVision. Unless there's any, any, yep. any other last minute insane theories anyone wants to throw out. Mm, no, I, that's all the insane. I don't have any insane theories, to be quite honest. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll save mine for next episode. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Sounds good. Uh, we've held you on here for, for a while. Reese. An hour and 40 minutes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, um, I really enjoyed getting to hop on this 30 minute podcast. Thank you for advertising <laughs> much. I really appreciate it. Yes. Yeah, for having there, you, yeah. I don't know if there are, are any socials you want to plug for like our 10 viewers here. Uh, I, I don't believe you have a YouTube channel at this time. Uh, no. So I don't know if you have anything to plug um, specifically. But stay tuned. Uh, I plan on launching that uh, this Tuesday, actually. And uh, come next podcast episode, I will hook all of you guys up. It, it actually is a YouTube channel staying exclusively on Paramount Plus. So please do <laughs> you like, subscribe, and comment. And uh, of course, pay for Paramount Plus because it's, it's highly necessary. And um, yeah. Oh, uh, Breakfast for Pancakes. Watch it. Uh, amazing. Uh, one of my best works. Um, definitely should do it. <laughs> Absolutely. All 100%. Right. All right. Well, uh, th thank you for being on, celebrating this very special episode. Oh, I didn't mention this. It's my birthday. So, um, uh, yeah, yeah that's everyone why this is a happy... very special episode here. Uh, everyone wish happy, Brennan happy birthday in the comments. Or yes, this is in a review or something. Yeah, the first and only episode that will ever occur on, on my birthday. I will make sure of it. If we're set to have another episode uh, be recorded directly on my birthday, I will drive this podcast into the ground before <laughs> that occurs. That might happen way before that occurs, but we'll see. Well, uh, oh, yeah. Brent, happy birthday. Congratulations on finally turning 18. It's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, well, uh, thank you, Reese. You're very welcome. Uh, thank you. Uh, and we would absolutely love to have you back on in three years where, uh, when you f finally turn 18. Oh, yeah, for sure. And by that point, you can uh, make fun of me um, for predicting the deaths of Wiccan, Speed, Vision, White Vision, Haywood, everybody. Yeah. It so it has been more than a pleasure. And um, again, happy birthday, Brennan. And I hope you guys have a wonderful time. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, no problem, man. Thanks for coming on. Absolutely. Bye, everyone. Finally, he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that went a, that went a lot longer than I expected, but he he did contributed a lot, so oh, I'm yes. glad he came on is, uh, as our first guest. Yeah, it's definitely been one of our most uh, like you know every episode we do is fantastic. Every episode is pure gold, but the best. Yeah, but it, it 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 was a real pleasure to have him on. So for sure, uh, yeah, we appreciate him coming on yeah. to talk about all that stuff. Of course, um, the the deepest podcast we've had so far. Oh yeah. Um, so Absolutely. now after if anyone's left listening we're going to get to the news yeah and uh, I, yeah we're going to do news uh fairly quickly yeah uh, as probably. you know i'm sure we're over here and uh next podcast episode will uh go a lot deeper into some news we have about something we don't usually talk about uh pokemon Be before we touch on uh, what we'll go to more in depth next episode, I'm sure. Uh, especially if we have a third and someone on, a friend we have who, oh, yeah, who uh, knows a lot about Pokemon. Pokemon. That would be a cool episode that would be cool. To, yeah. to really dive into well, everything. Well, I'll at least just tell the news about the Pokemon thing and then we'll yes. go in depth in it next time. Um, so there's a lot of news, uh, but we can go through it pretty quickly. <laughs> of course, there's um, a lot of news. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, so basically, so the first part has been out for a while. Uh, there's going to be a new Marvel Studios show but Marvel Studios Assembled, it's a behind-the-scenes show, basically so that we are not without Marvel for a week. Um, the first episode premieres March 12th, and it's the making oh, wow. of WandaVision. Interesting. So we'll 
we'll get to see some behind the scenes stuff there on the 12th while we wait for Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, second piece of news, Danny Elfman will create the music for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Uh, I believe he did the music for Age of Ultron, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so this is not Danny Elfman's first time into it. Uh, he's pretty big. He designs music for a lot of different things. Um, so there's that, right? Um, the director of The Last Jedi, will, his, his trilogy is still on. I don't know why that's there. It should be way later. Oh, well. It should be in the Star Wars, but whatever. Star Wars is Marvel. Marvel's Star Wars. If what the comic standpoint is. Exactly. Um, Ant-Man 3 will start filming this summer. Cool. So that's cool. Maybe we'll get some behind-the-scenes looks at that and stuff. Neat. Um, Jennifer Lawrence is rumored to be – has been rumored to have been cast as Storm – or no, not Storm. Sue Storm. Storm is African. Jennifer Lawrence is not. Who's Sue Storm? The name's The Invisible Woman. Is that? Okay. He's in the Fantastic Four. Uh, According to Murphy's Multiverse, they're usually pretty spot on about a lot of this stuff. I I sure hope so, because they are the one who says that Charlie Cox's Daredevil's coming back, and I want that, so I'm hoping they're accurate with everything from now on, just so they can be accurate with Daredevil as Um, well. A lot of people wanted John Krasinski's wife, Emily Blunt, to be uh, Sue Storm or the oh, Invisible yeah. Woman. That would have been cool. I'm okay with Jennifer Lawrence uh, as long as she doesn't hate her part like she did in the X-Men movies. <laughs> um, this news dropped this week. Big Hero 6 might be coming to the MCU. Big Hero 6 is originally a Marvel comic book. Oh, wow. Um, and it makes sense to add it to the ever-expanding MCU. So Big Hero 6 might be coming to live-action MCU. Okay. Um, I like that movie a lot. It's a good yeah. movie. It's been a while since I've seen it, but it's a good movie. Um, it'd be interesting to see them sprinkle that into the MCU and see yeah. how they do it. Um, Spider-Man 3, we've got – there a lot, a lot happened with Spider-Man 3 last week. Uh, we got three fake names and then finally a real name. <laughs> that did happen last <laughs> week. Uh, Tom Holland posted that it would be called Spider-Man Phone Home, mm-hmm. and then uh, the guy you immediately who... like 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 s- s- Snapchatted me that, and I was like, I was like, dope. And then like you, and then like, uh, like no, immediately wait. replied, and you were like, wait a minute, it's two called names, and I was like, and then two names? Zendaya threw out that it was going to be called. Uh, home slice, and that's when I knew we were caught in a genjutsu when we were being lied to, bamboozled by Marvel once again because they cannot trust Tom Holland. Yeah. Um. But then the next day they officially announced it as Spider Man No Way Home in theaters on Christmas. Mm-hmm. Um. Assuming the pandemic's over by then, and I hope to God it is. I do no longer want to see Mark Hamill eating some space space juice from a space cow. Yes. Um. What do you think of the name, No Way Home? I like the name a lot. I personally do not like the title of, 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 of the second Spider-Man movie. I didn't like the title Far From Home. It, like, it, you know, it has home in it, but it kind of throws off the vibe or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I would like No Way Home a lot more if, with, if, it, if it wasn't for Far From Home, because they both end in home. Like You can find a replacement for, for, for home. But I do like home No slice. Way Home. Yeah. If they rename <laughs> Spider-Man 2 to Spider-Man Home Slice, uh, honestly, perfection. <laughs> we got a uh, set date for the Loki premiere. We got June 11th yeah, which, for Loki. Which, which I could have sworn they previously had said it would be coming out in like in May. And now we're like, what day in May? And they're like, June. June, <laughs> <laughs> June 11th. Like, May. May, June 11th. Cool Marvel things. <laughs> well, I think they're more or less kind of planning for the pushing back of things again. Yeah. Um, Looks as far like as we know, nothing's been moved back again. I don't think. Not, um, n- not, not, not yet. No. When's Black yeah. Widow supposed to come out? That's April or May, right? Is uh, it April or May? It's, it's. Uh, I believe it's April twenty thirty six, at this rate. No, uh, <laughs> I think it's still April, as far as I know, which All would right. make sense because then Falcon and the Winter Soldier leads right up to that. Oh yeah, and okay. then another, be interesting. is it Shang Chi comes after that? I, I don't even yes. know anymore. I'm so excited for it. For oh, that, that reminds me. Uh, if you have Marvel Unlimited, and if you don't, it's whatever. I have no idea what you that should, is. So I'm gonna. There's a. I'm gonna assume I don't. <laughs> so it's. That's true. It's a. It's an app you can read comics on. It's. A, yeah. I think it's eleven bucks oh. a month. All right. Okay. Okay. No, it's ten dollars a month. Anyway, so 
I guess you don't need that. You can go to the store and buy the comic books. But they just started a new Shang Chi comic Ooh. line. It's really cool. They have two issues out. Um, so if you want to read that at some point, uh, I don't know where they sell comics. So not we don't live there. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> we live in Alberta. Yeah, yeah, yeah somewhere yeah, yeah. in Alberta. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will uh, be bleeping that out. <laughs> uh, um, anyway. Yeah, uh, speed around with like with news here. I got I got work in the morning. <laughs> That's right. Uh, all right. So Kevin Kevin Feige re- uh, revealed there's no plan for an R-rated movie inside the MCU except Deadpool three, mm-hmm. um, because of that because of uh, the fans and the ambition of director Stephen Ford. Jimmy Woo might be getting his own show on Disney Plus. Ooh. Uh, Heroic Hollywood reports that Doctor Strange two will wrap up filming on April twenty third. Hey. Uh, so now in a DC, uh, Sasha <laughs> Kaye from The Young and the Restless has been cast as Supergirl in the Flashpoint movie. No one knows oh. why. People are racist. Anyway, uh, hmm. we got pictures of the Jesus Joker for some reason. Oh, uh, yeah. My faith, was... in, my faith in the Schneider cut is gone. That was so funny. It was such a funny picture. It looks like it was like a fan made parody. I had so bad. God, <laughs> I, I don't want to watch that movie anymore. Anyway, continuing, uh, Charm City Kings, director. <laughs> Angel Manuel Soto is set to make a live-action Blue Beetle movie with another DC oh, hero, so that should be cool. That that would be really neat. I I, I like the character of of Blue Beetle a lot, mm-hmm. so I do. I, yeah, I would like yeah. to watch that. Oh yeah, I, unless it's bad. Yeah, which it bad, probably which will be. Yeah, because <laughs> DC EU. Uh, Shazam mm-hmm. Two was chosen a filming location and will beginning will begin filming this spring according to Murphy's Multiverse. Nice. Uh, according to Comic Book Now, J.J. Abrams and Ta Nahisi Coates are rebooting Superman, and we don't know if Henry Cavill is coming back for it. Stop rebooting stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Give me uh, a break, DCU please. DCU, I'm begging you. Yeah. Uh, on the bright mm-hmm. side of the DCEU, Amber Heard has supposedly been fired. From Aquaman Yay. 2, but not for the reason we wanted. Yeah. Apparently, she breached her contract by gaining weight, uh, which is not great. That's not a good reason to fire someone, but yeah, at least no, she's right? fired. Uh, oh and she's rumored to be replaced by Amelia Clark, who is from, I believe, uh, Game of Thrones. I don't know. Didn't watch it. That's Bad Batch, May 4th. This is Star Wars news now. That Bad I was Batch, excited May about. 4th. I, some, so somehow I missed the initial trailer when, when it dropped. I oh, saw the news did? about Bad Batch, so I went back and watched it. That looks like that looks so good. It looks awesome. It, it's the first time we've even seen this era, really. Yeah, the, yeah. The book Catalyst, which I just I'm, think is a really great book. Anyway. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited for this show now. Like, I mean, there's some characters that I don't like, of like the Bad Batch, or whatever. But like, how, how this show looks overall, how it fits in to the universe, I'm very excited. Oh yeah, of, like, gonna be about awesome. Show, you know? And it's you know, it's just the Clone Wars sequel. That yes. Or see, it's season eight Clone Wars essentially. <laughs> uh, just not called the Clone Wars. It's called the Bad Batch. Uh, the last, this, this, I mean, I don't know if you'll care much about this, but the last Alphabet Squadron book will be released on Tuesday, um, which is nice. in the no, Star Wars universe. Okay. Um, I still need to bring you those books. I will bring yes. them to you eventually, maybe mm-hmm. on Tuesday. You when I have get my address books. in Alberta now. Yeah, exactly. So. I do. Um, what else? Uh, Avatar Studios was announced. Yes. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, cool. Yes, I did see cool, that. Cool, cool, cool. Cool. Speed, speed, speed. Okay. Pokemon announced the Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl series mm-hmm. will be released in late 2021, which is a Sinnoh region remake. Very exciting. Um, oh, yeah, me too. We'll talk more about that next episode. They also mm-hmm. announced Pokemon Legends Arceus, a game that takes place in the ancient Sinnoh region. Um, and it looks like it's going to be Breath of the Wilds-esque. Uh, so that's cool. It's an open world. I'm very excited about that. And finally, news that just came out today, or at least to me, uh, Rick Riordan, the author of the Percy Jackson series, has a new book called Daugh- uh, coming out called Daughter of the Deep, which mm-hmm. has been hailed as a modern take on 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Yeah, I'm very interested to see what direction that in- ends up taking. Like, I, I very much very like excited. him as like like as as an author. I'm sh- I, I believe we've talked about the shows he's doing for Netflix and and Disney plus he's still for Netflix? maybe oh yeah so he's doing uh, like the, like the percy jackson series as like a series on disney plus yeah, yeah i knew about with, those. he's working with like with netflix to do like movies based on the kane chronicles okay i read the first one i didn't get a chance to read the other two but i liked the first one a lot. they were a little more confusing than than the percy jackson books so that's because like egyptian mythology isn't quite as straight no. forward but like but they were very good reads 
Yeah, I, I love Rick Rowden. And then the stuff he's done with other authors of uh, different uh, cultural origins, you know, kind of doing the same, kind of letting them have a platform to do things. He's he's fantastic. I love Rick Rowden. I love Rick Rowden. So uh, that was our quick, okay. that was our speed run on the news. Boom. Um, a lot of yep. news this week, but I did not expect us to spend that much time to talk about WandaVision. But <laughs> I would like to thank Reese, uh, who also lives in Alberta, mm-hmm. with me and Brennan. We are Canadian for some reason now. Um, yep. We, hey. Well, I mean, you can see the flag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, unless you're listening to it, then you can't see anything. You can um, hear the flag. You can, <laughs> you can just hear the maple leaf in the back. Yep. Um, Sounds like maple syrup. Oh, yeah. So... Um, I would like to thank Reese for coming on. Once again, he was fantastic. Really added a lot to our conversation. Um, Brennan, don't forget to go follow him. Uh, not follow him. Go uh, add, subscribe to his channel, not yep. Brennan. Don't forget to subscribe to this, wherever you listen to it, and to Wolfgate Entertainment on YouTube. Uh, and follow us on Instagram. We have an Instagram page now. It's at Um yes, I did. don't post much on there, but I will try to more if I have time which yeah. I do. So there will be a me. post on there when this episode comes out. I'm, I'm assuming. Yes. Yeah. Uh, maybe I, I don't run the page uh, while he runs the page. I mean, so I'm just right. like yep. making promises on like his behalf now. So, I mean, I could give you the information, but I don't remember the password. We're just going to have to go with it. <laughs> of so... course. That's how all of our old <laughs> Twitter accounts died too. I think yeah. pages that we would run there. So leave yep. the password. <laughs> all right. So uh, I think that's it. It's like, uh, mm-hmm. it's almost two hours. Yep. Um, I, so uh, we're not going to extend this intro like we normally do. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this, give it a like, give this, this subscribe, and we will see you all in the next one in two weeks when WandaVision's over. I can't Absolutely. Believe it already. What the hell am I going to do with my life? Yeah. Same what thing are we going to about, yeah, what are we gonna talk, about, <laughs> talk about on this podcast? Like <laughs> Pokemon, I guess? <laughs> yeah. That until the Winter Soldier, yes. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, take care. Peace. Have a good one.